I've driven a car which actually makes me really smile. I am having way too much fun driving this thing. Welcome back to Future Classics. My name is Becky Evans and today we're going to take a look at this beautiful BMW Z4M Coupe. The Z4M from 2006 to 2008 was the last in BMW's recent history of two-seater sports cars that really got the M treatment. Looking at its predecessor, the Z3M, which was affectionately known as the clown shoe and also the bread van, you can really see its lineage here with this fastback coupe, which has also got a 245 litre boot which is accessible from the large hatch at the rear. And when I say this car got the full M treatment, this actually was the last car to ever have that legendary S54 engine which came in the E46 M3, which meant it has a 3.2 litre inline six producing over 340 brake horsepower. It also borrowed its steering ratio and brakes from the M3 CSL. They really went to town on this car and made it really, really special. To me, BMW gave this ultimate sports car look. You've got the double bubble roof, long nose, short backside, flat top haunches and also with this the coupe was twice as stiff as its sibling the Roadster which meant that it had really nice firm suspension to boot. In its day the nearest competitor to the Z4M would have been the Porsche Cayman. Now it was never known for being a better sports car than that but more of an interesting alternative with what is a legendary engine. Subsequent Z4s have been more suited as a cruiser so this represents the last of its kind a BMW proper petrol head two-seater sports car. If you're in the market for one of these, around £15,000 will get you one with quite a few miles on the clock. But for the more sought after examples with low mileage, great interior, you're looking at around £30,000. These are appreciating fast, so if you want to get one, you need to snap it up quick. Hi, my name's Tom and this is my BMW Z4M Coupe. So I've had this car for 18 months. Uh, I bought it from someone up in Burnley. Um, I was looking for about 18 months prior to buying this for the right one. Um, it had to um, tick, my, tick my boxes, meet my needs. The things that I was looking for with a Z4M, um, I knew I wanted this model. I use this car all the time. It's my daily driver um, for commuting, going to the shops, going on longer drives, Sunday tours, all that sort of stuff. So when I'm driving it, it's the uh, everything about the sound, the driving position, um, you know, everything's sort of compact around you. You're in the sm snug little cabin. Um, there's enough room to move around, but everything's just there. Um, it's uh, sort of quite free and high revving. And when you get up to the, you know, sort of five, six, seven thousand, um, it's just the, the noise is, is electrifying. The way it handles, the way it feels on the road um, can be a little bit bumpy and harsh at times, um, but once you find uh, you know, a nice smooth bit of road and you can let rip and um, yeah, it meets my needs as long as I'm under the speed limit. As, you, as you're going up through the gears, it's a very um, sort of short throw gearbox, uh, you know, first, second, third, it, it just flows so quickly. So I'd say this car has a dual personality. You can use it every day, um, but you can also use it to have fun. Um, if you look at the car, where you're sat, you're, you are sort of towards the rear of the car almost. So, uh, you know, turning into the corners, you, you feel the car moving around you rather than sort of leading the car from the front. You, it's, it's, you're pointing it in the direction that you want to go and, and off you go. If anyone was looking to buy one of these, um, I would uh, really recommend it. One thing to look out for though is the suspension. It, it can be quite firm um, with the sort of factory um, springs but that's easily changeable to make it into something that is much more drivable, much more pleasant on English roads. Driving this car around uh, rekindles that, that boyhood feel um, and uh, yeah, I, I um, just brings it all back. It's great. It's a very lively car um, and if the, the rear starts to go, it's going and, and it's, um, it can be a bit of a handful at times, um, but um, you know, it's got all of the ABS and stability and all that sort of stuff to, to keep you on track. I think this car is a future classic. 
It's, um, the values are appreciating. I'm not planning on selling it or getting rid of it. Um, I'm gonna keep this car um, hopefully for a very long time. Um, and yeah, it's got all the hallmarks of, of a, a future classic. The thing redlines at 8,000 RPM. Listen to how revvy that is. My goodness. That's absolutely fabulous. I love the feedback through the steering wheel. You really feel like you are in control of the drive. I'm speechless. I have to admit, when I saw that I had this car on the call sheet, I was very excited. It only ran for just a couple of years, but the impression that it left on people definitely has lasted for, well, nearly decades. To me, I was always just aware of the fact that it had that wonderful sounding S54 3.2 litre inline six. I remember the first time I drove one and I was like, wow, is this really what naturally aspirated M cars sounds like? Because this is addictive. Even though this car is not the fastest thing in the world, it feels incredibly capable. It's got a 50-50 weight distribution. The car has got hydraulic steering. There's so much feedback through the steering wheel of this thing. It feels like it's rewarding you the more that you push it on. And that noise. I mean, everybody knows that the E46 S54 engine has got one of the most delicious notes that there has ever been from BMW's M division. But to put all of that and shoehorn it into this little cute chassis, which is almost like a little, it feels to me like a little go-kart. You're driving it on and it's got that six-speed Gitrag gearbox in there as well. And these gearboxes are incredibly tight. They feel really, really easy to drive. And one of the things that I really find is that as you're pulling through the gears, it's so rewarding. I just... I'm driving it around these hills roads here and I'm just like this is what driving is all about you want to be able to feel what the car is doing you want to be able to enjoy every second of the drive and trust me this car definitely does that for you it's been a long while since I've driven a car which actually makes me really smile I'd get behind the wheel of this thing and just feel how cars used to be. Like when you're looking around the cockpit, everything is very much driver focused. It's not just about what it does have, it's about what it doesn't have. It's very driver centric. It's all focused at the cockpit here. All the dials are incredibly easy to see. You've literally just got your speedo and your rev counter and everything else is up to you. I mean, it's not the fastest car in the world. It's just over 330 brake horsepower and just over 260 foot pounds of torque. But all of this together, once you put all of those components it is just magical. I am enjoying this car so much. You can understand why the S54 won engine of the year back then. Even though this is a car that I was well aware of all the way through my younger years, I never realized how rare they were with just over 4,000 of them being produced. It is insane to think that there is such a finite amount of these things, especially in the UK, and there was only a very small amount of them that actually went to North America. I feel like driving one of these, you own a little bit of BMW M's history. And my goodness, the future back then really was bright for cars. It's just brilliant. Well, the Z4M really does not disappoint. They say big things come in small packages, but trust me, for a two-seater sports car, this is proper petrol head goodness. That S54 soundtrack with the way this car is set up, it is perfect for a sunny weekend. But also, you have the dual personality that you can use it anytime, any place. If you're looking at getting one of these, make sure you get in there quick, because these are definitely a future classic, if not already. Make sure you join us again for the next episode of Future Classics, and we'll see you soon.